<laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday, it's raining. I'm just feeling a bit floppy, but I do need to ride my horse and I put a little poll on my Instagram for you guys to vote and it was between having a little jump on the lunge or doing some schooling and you guys have voted schooling! Now if you've been following me at all you will know that at the moment I'm a bit of a school dodger. I just don't know, I just can't get myself going. I I keep saying this, I just feel a bit tired, a bit floppy. I just feel like winter's got the better of me. And honestly, the last thing I can think about is going in that school to go and do some circles. But I do need to because I have the Arua regionals coming up, which I did last year. And I loved, so I need to put the work in. I'm also on a jumping ban just because I'm getting married in five weeks and I need to try not to break anything or damage myself. So what I can do is a little bit limited, hence the idea of having a jump on a lunge, which I still will be doing, but just not today. Thanks to you guys. Anyway, so here I am. I'm at the yard. It is lunchtime. It's raining. It's grey. It's miserable. And I'm feeling so enthusiastic. Um, but I'd better get out of the car and go and get some work done because... That horse ain't gonna ride himself. Hurry! Hello, handsome boy. Hello, gorgeous. Are you having a fun pajama day? No? We get to go riding now. You'll enjoy that, won't you? In this soggy weather. Come on, go get some tack. It's so miserable. Look how wet it is. Anyway, I need to go and get some tack. So obviously I've been putting off the schooling and I haven't done anything for a little while. So I'm thinking to try and like inspire myself, pump myself up a little bit. I'm going to try and set myself just like a few little tasks, you know, do little achievable goals. So when I go into the arena, I've got a plan and I don't just wobble around the edges for half an hour before giving up and coming out. I need to try and kickstart the school in and get myself ready for competition season. But anyway, we'll get back to that. I'm going to go grab some tack. This is my mess, my tack room mess. Surely everyone has a tack room mess, but anyway, this is mine. Here's my Cavaletti dressage bridal. I need a new bridal bag, it's so broken. Come on then. So going back to goals for session, mine and Harry's never ending goal is to try and get him more uphill and off the forehand rounder in my hands and straighter through his body so with that in mind and knowing that we haven't schooled for a while i'm thinking we're going to go into the arena and work on transitions and then i'm going to work on transitions within the gate so thinking about pushing him on slowing him down and collecting him up and that will just help to engage the hind end it should get him more uphill and rounder in my hands and hopefully the impulsion of pushing the trot or the canter on should draw him straighter that was really creepy the door just swung open while i was in the middle of talking and i thought someone was coming in <laughs> honestly i'm still not great at vlogging in front of people but anyway so we've got the first two plans we're going to do transitions and then we're going to do transitions within the gate, pushing him on, slowing him down, all the idea of bringing him uphill, rounder, more together and straighter. Um, and finally, finally, I think we will work on some bending exercises. So we'll do some serpentines and we can do some figures of eight. Um, depending on how he's feeling, I'm thinking right now we'll do serpentines in trot um, and maybe if he's feeling uphill and collected and I haven't fallen out with him yet, 
we might try and do some figures of eight in canter again so we've got him straighter rounder more together and then we're going to start putting the turns in thinking about keeping him still uphill he's not allowed to fall onto the forehand and run onto the shoulder just because he's going round a corner he's got to stay uphill and i might even put some transitions you know trot to halt maybe on the center lines as i'm doing the serpentines and again think about bringing them up and more together and then we'll just finish off with some stretch work so we're doing transitions transitions within the gate and then some bending exercises sounds nice and easy I'm gonna go grab my tack Tired, Harold. Have you had a busy day so far? You haven't. That's exactly how I feel, young man. So here we go, the start of our schooling session and we're working on transitions. So that is our first transition. And as you can see, he stuck his head in the air and then once he halted, he dropped his head back down. And that is exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want to create an argument. I don't want to have to fight with him for a round contact. By doing the transitions, he just naturally comes rounder anyway. So we always start off our schooling sessions like this. So we go again, a little bit against the hand through the transition, but then round once he's halted and then I just keep my hands nice and still and just walk him on and try and encourage him to keep that frame I don't want to be going around seesawing or particularly playing with the reins too much I just want a nice steady contact and I do really think that transitions help with that so we've got a nice round frame steady in the contact and a little pat as a reward and then everything that we do on one rein we do on the other rein so a nice round frame and at this point, I'm just giving my reins away just to make sure he knows that when I soften the contact, it doesn't mean just walk off. He still has to stay there until I give him the aid to move forward. So that's what that was. And so here we have a little comparison. On the right is our first transition and on the left is our last transition. And as you can see, it has made a huge difference to the way he's carrying himself. So quick check of my girth and a little pat for the pony and now that we're warmed up and I'm happy with the frame in the walk 
we will move on to something new. So something that I've just started with Harry is practicing some turns, just making sure he's really listening to my aids and also just to make him think about where he's putting his legs. So that there was a turn on the quarters and this is something new. I don't do this very often with him. So it's a little bit messy and there's definitely room for improvement, but he's showing that he understands what I'm asking. He needs to turn his front end and yes, he could do to step less with the hinds, but it's a good starting point. So once we did that, I then moved on to a turn on the forehand, which actually I think he's making a better job of. He's actually kept those fronts fairly still and in place. So I was quite impressed with that. But the main thing is just to make him think about where he's moving his body and how he's moving his legs. So we've turned left. We're now going to turn right. There we go, slowly but surely, and we have a nice little crossover on that rein. Good boy. So again, just making him think about where he's putting himself, where he's putting his legs, getting listened to the aids. And now it's time to start some trot work. So typical Harry style, he's already lengthened his neck. He's slightly against the hand. So we go back to transitions, make him think about rounding his neck, coming a little bit shorter, a little bit more upright. He's still on the forehand there. You can see he just bears down quite a lot, so the transitions really do help. There, so I find if we do them in quicker succession, it just starts to move his weight back onto those hind legs. So we're now on the right rein and he's a bit deep in the contact there. So I don't hold for very long, push him straight out of that one. So I don't want him to bear down and into the next transition. And he's looking more uphill here. And he steps under more as we make the transition up, which is everything that we're going for. And there, I think his frame is looking so much better. We've done quite a lot of transitions at this point. He's really starting to come up and together. He's really thinking about what I'm going to ask him to do next. So he's keeping his balance rather than just plowing down onto my hand and just running onto his shoulder. He knows that transitions are coming. So he's constantly keeping his weight back and getting ready for me to ask that next downward transition. And again, lovely square halt. Excuse my wobbly GoPro. I've obviously pressed the button. But here we go, we're now into the canter and it's the same thing again. We are going to be thinking about transitions. So at the moment I'm just working the canter and making sure I feel like if I ask for a transition, he's going to do it. A little bit labored. So a quick check of the girth and then it's back on again. So you'll notice I did canter to walk and I tend to do these more dramatic transitions where I don't feel like he's listening because I kind of need to challenge him more. So rather than doing canter to trot, I'll go all the way down and do like canter to walk or halt to really make him think about what's gonna be coming up next. So that there was a little bit politer and I allow him to continue the trot. And now we're thinking about the walk to canters. Again, it was a little bit laboured. He wasn't quite ready for it. And then he went onto the forehand, which is why I give the reins away, just to say, stop leaning on me. You have to carry your own head. But it looks nice and round here and a lovely transition into canter. You could just see the picture looked better. He was more prepared. His weight was already back. And therefore those transitions to canter are so much better because his, his body is in a better position for it. And that's what all those transitions are helping. And that downward transition was just lovely. So what does transitions within a gate mean? It means, for example, you could do a really small trot or you can do a really big trot. So here I'm going to do a really small trot. I'm going to compress him and keep saying, can you make it smaller? Slowly there. And then I'm going to use that energy that I've compressed and go big trot. Off you go, Harry. Boom, boom, boom use that energy so that is what a transition within a gate is i quite often finish the big trot with a halt just to make him think about sitting back up again pushing the trot on can sometimes push him onto the forehand so i just use halts to bring him back 
reset and start again. So here we go. We're going to go small trot, small, and then big trot, push, 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 like that. So it just helps to make the horse more adjustable, making them realise that they don't just have one trot. There's lots of different gears within a trot. You can do your standard working trot, you can do a medium trot, which is what we're doing there, and then you can go bigger than this and go into the extended trot. And the extended trot would be more uphill and more movement through the shoulders again, which is something me and Harry will be working towards at some point. So here we're doing a, a medium trot-ish into a halt. It could have had a little bit more uphill and a bit more bounce, but you just got a bit flat, which is why I popped the downward transition in. But yeah, helping your horse to understand the different gears within a gate will allow you to be able to maneuver your horse better. So say if you've got a really tight corner coming up, you might need to do a few half halts, take that pace off a little bit to help you get round the corner, and then you'll put your leg back on and push as you come out of the corner. Nice big medium trot there. And again, we're going to do similar things in the canter. Harry's canter isn't as adjustable as the trot yet. We need to work on it. So something that I do to help him work on it, which is what you've just seen there, is I will do a working canter. I'll bring the circle smaller to help him think about sitting up and using the hind leg. And then I'll push him back on again. And as always, we're going to be doing lots and lots of downward transitions. I'm now using a turn on the hind quarters, just because that big canter just got him a little bit onward bound, a bit heavy in my hands. You can see the turn on the quarters wasn't as good as it was previously. He's got a bit tight in his neck and just a bit stressed. So I'm going to walk him off, let the adrenaline come back down again. Medium canter is always exciting for Harry but I think he's actually come back better for it. And he looks more uphill. Yes, he's a little bit more tense, but look how much more spring he's got in his step. So that there is a lovely trot. It's bouncy, it's tight, it's together. So now that we're a bit happier with the way that Harry's going, even though he's having a little bit of a spook there, he feels more together, he's rounder, he feels more rideable. We're going to move on to some bending work. So we're going to start off with a serpentine. And bending is really good for Harry because he does get a little bit set in his ways. You work him on one rein and he gets comfortable with that bend. He's quite happy there. And then you go to change the rein and it comes with some kind of big shock horror. He can get a bit fussy about it. It's like you've ruined his rhythm. So actually doing lots and lots of bends, just like with the transitions, making it normal and making it part of the general work makes Harry more adjustable. So you can see here, it looks lovely. He's really uphill, he's round, he's listening. And obviously when it comes to your dressage, being able to make turns is really important. So once I've got him together, that's when we move on to the bending work. And I'm just popping some downward transitions on the center line here. Just because sometimes on turns, he can plow down a little bit and just get on the forehand. So I find that making the corner, getting himself straight, doing a downward transition, sitting him up and then starting again really does help him. So we're on the walk to canter and we're now going to start making our turns so go forwards to trot and then picking up canter onto the new lead and that was fairly smart again like i said he can come against the hand a little bit there's a lot going on when you think about riding <laughs> little monkey that's his little spooky corner so yes when you are riding turns particularly changing rain in canter there is a lot going on you need to do a downward transition you need to change the bend and then you need to pick up the new lead so for a horse that isn't particularly organized like harry you can struggle with balance and you can come against the contact a little bit so all that lovely soft suppling work that you've just done can go a little bit out of the window once you start doing the downwards transitions and the turning with him. But you've got to do it to get better, haven't you? So that's what we're doing. 
So you can see here he's got a little bit footy in the mouth, he looks a bit heavy, you can see I'm fighting with him, I'm just trying to sit him back up again and say we're about to do a change, are you ready? There we go. So he doesn't always do changes particularly well. Sometimes he just gives me a feeling that he might and that's when I'll ask him. Only do something if you think you're going to be successful. So I am red faced, we've just finished, but honestly, I am so proud of that. I thought that was a really good attempt. Um, <laughs> I think I actually enjoyed it. I'm still out here, I've been out here for like half an hour now and I haven't regressed my decision at all. So I don't know why I've been hiding from the arena, as I keep saying, when I do eventually get in here. Maybe this is a start of something and I can kind of say I'm actually looking forward to riding tomorrow. Oh my God. You guys have Instagram who voted for me to do this today. You might have just helped me a lot. <laughs> Because yeah, I am buzzing after that. He felt lovely. And actually, dodging the arena might have done him some good because I think the break has just refreshed him and, and we're both feeling a bit more sprightly. Even though it is raining, horrible, soggy in the arena. We did it! Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.